This splint maintains elbow extension and prevents elbow flexion contractures. This splint is used when the patient is unable to achieve or maintain full elbow extension or for post-operative positioning for anterior arm grafts that cross or meet the elbow joint. These splints are most often used at night for sustained stretch if the patient has decreased range of motion or a flexion contracture is present. To apply the anterior elbow extension splint. Assist the patient's arm into full extension. With the arm straight and the thumb up, place the splint onto the anterior medial side of the arm in contact with the antecubital fossa. The narrower end of the splint should be at the wrist. Hold the elbow in extension to keep the splint in place while securing. Starting at the elbow, wrap the elastic bandage twice around the antecubital fossa to prevent the splint from slipping. Cover the distal end of the splint with the elastic bandage. Continue wrapping the elastic bandage up the arm and cover the end of the splint. Then, reverse the direction back down the arm to the wrist. Secure the elastic bandage with tape or clips. Posterior elbow splints. Posterior elbow splints are used to keep the elbow positioned most often at 90 degrees of flexion. This splint is used for post-operative immobilization of a skin graft to the posterior elbow region. When the elbow is positioned at 90 degrees, the skin is placed on a stretch. This splint may also be used for fracture positioning and has a built-in air pocket to protect the elbow from pressure. Never fill the built-in air pocket with dressings or padding as this will cause pressure to the elbow. Padding and dressing should cover the entire length of the patient's arm so that there is no skin directly against the plastic. Do not line the splint with dressings as they can shift position and potentially cause skin breakdown. So then you just place your arm in there. Place the arm into the splint and begin wrapping the elastic bandage at the elbow, making sure to wrap over the proximal end of the splint to prevent the splint from migrating. Wrap the elastic bandage back down toward the wrist. This splint should extend to mid-hand and the distal end of the splint should be wrapped as well. And the padding went above the splint on this side and above below the splint on this side so you're not plastic against raw skin. Even though your wound is right here, the padding has to go the length of the splint. Secure the elastic bandage with clips and or tape.